My name is Michael Wells. I'm an engineering technologist with Dell. And uh, while my uh, friend Sam was able to cover the, the idea of what the Apex Cloud Platforms are, now I get to show you the meat, what, what they really are, which is exciting. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, start at the beginning, show you what a deployment looks like. So in this, let me jump out here. And for this one, I'm actually going to show you a side-by-side -side, um, of the deployment process for both Azure and OpenShift so that you can see that this isn't just a collection of products, right? The Apex Cloud Platform really is a family. Right? So on the left, we have the deployment for Azure. On the right, we have the deployment for OpenShift. They're going through the same node discovery process. Um, they're going through uh, the same uh, type of defining the node configuration settings, the, the node names and, and network settings. You're going to configure bonds and, and all of this, right? So we're collecting all of this information about how the cluster is going to be built out. Here we have. Um, network information, so the management network, the VLAN ID. We're going through and configuring the TPM for the nodes. Um, in both cases, we're going to capture the rack name and the rack position. All this stuff is going to be accessible from inside the cloud OS uh, once the deployment's done. But Michael, just to clarify, one of these is the setup process using Apex Cloud Management, and one is the setup process using OpenShift's deployment tool? No. So this is, on the left side, we have the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure, for Microsoft Azure. Okay. On the right hand, we have the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift. So they are okay. both the Dell deployment automation, but for the different Cloud OS experiences. And, and the outcome of this deployment is going to be? A fully configured cluster. Okay. So yep. one's going to be an OpenShift cluster. The other one's going to be a what? <laughs> is going to be an Azure Stack HCI cluster. Okay. okay. That was the missing point. I was like, are you, is it both OpenShift? <laughs> no. So the, the, the ACP for Azure is built on top of HCI OS. So Microsoft's HCI OS. Mm -hmm. So it's an H, Azure Stack <laughs> HCI cluster, but it's a new level of Azure Stack HCI. Right? Okay. So Microsoft announced the new level. So before you had validated nodes and integrated systems. Um, and then they introduced the new premier partner tier. This is currently the only offering in that tier. What's different in that, What's that tier? Uh, it has to do with the level of integration um, and the level of collaboration with Microsoft. Okay, so, so it's a partner program, not, not a different OS. It's, a, it's not a different operating system. Okay. It's a partner program, but it allows us to build yeah. uh, capabilities that you can't do with an integrated system. What are those capabilities you're building on top of that then? So for example, uh, with Windows Admin Center, we're not using the traditional extension framework within Windows Ad Admin Center. We're actually using the Solution Builder extensions. So that allows us to do things workflow-wise within Windows Admin Center that you couldn't do with a traditional extension. Because the way the extension framework is built, it maintains that separation. So an extension kind of becomes an add-on. Mm. Right. This is using a different mechanism, so we can actually, and we'll see that um, in a little bit when I get to things like lifecycle management and integration. Right. But what we're trying to drive home is this isn't, even though you're picking two different cloud OSs, it's the same family of products. You should expect the same types of results and the same efficiencies from all of the products in that family. <laughs> Have you started working on the Tanzu side yet, or are you doing that? Uh, it is um, uh, being worked on. It is not GA yet, but that the, it is planned for this year. Um, Sam, I don't know if we can go into any more timeline than that, but uh, the, are we working on the uh, VMware version? So we announced the VMware version at Dell Tech World last year, yep. um, but as far as time frame, um, I know we have it scheduled for this year. I don't know if I can be more specific. And, and yeah. Azure is GA? 
Yeah, that's correct. So okay. um, Q2, Q3 time frame. Okay. Thank you. Both the um, Apex Cloud Platform for Microsoft Azure and Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift are GA and available in the market today. Okay. So those are the ones that we're focusing on with this session. So when you say a cloud OS, you're referring to one of those platforms? Yes. Okay, not an actual operating system on... <laughs> the cloud <laughs> operating computers. experience. Okay. Right, so in each case, it is, it is an operating system. So in the case of ACP for Azure, it's HCI OS. But it's not just HCI OS, it's everything that's been built around that, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about ACP for OpenShift, it is an operating system, right? It's OpenShift running on, on Red Hat Core OS, right? But it's what we're doing above and beyond that that makes this um, family of products unique. Okay. Right. So to show an example, the question was brought up, once the deployment's done, what do you have? So in the case of OpenShift, we have a fully configured OpenShift cluster. So it's based on our MC nodes, um, which everything in the Apex Cloud Platform family is based on these MC nodes. Uh, running Red Hat Core OS, OpenShift for Kubernetes, uh, their software-defined networking, and it's using Dell SDS storage as the backend storage, right? We connect to that through our container storage integration, our CSI, right? And you have um, the ability to run native containers on that, right? The secret sauce that Sam was talking about really has to do with that Cloud Platform Foundation software. That Cloud Platform Foundation software, in the case of OpenShift, is running in containers on top of OpenShift. Right, so all of that is configured and done. So what you come out with on the other end is a fully configured OpenShift cluster with the CSI connected to the backend storage and the Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software. Right? This is licensed using OpenShift Platform Plus. Uh, a, it's a specialized SKU of Platform Plus. Um, but it does include entitlements for um, advanced cluster management, advanced cluster security, and Quay. So if you're familiar with OpenShift, you do have those entitlements uh, to be able to do multi-cluster management and multi-cluster security. Right. So that was ACM and what else? ACS. ACS. Advanced cluster security. Is that extra? No, it's all included. That's included. Yep, it's part of the license. When you say entitled, why do you say entitled then? Uh, so it's... Um, Red Hat charges a subscription for that. Okay. The OpenShift Platform Plus subscription that is included with this covers those features. Okay. Right. It's it has to do with their their license tiering. So if you below that you have the OpenShift uh, mm -hmm. container platform uh, that doesn't include those multi cluster entitlements, it, uh, OpenShift Platform Plus is the next level up that does. Okay. Right. The only thing unique about our SKU is it doesn't include ODF which be, is because we're using Dell SDS as the storage. Right, and then of course that Cloud Platform Foundation software, um, which is really the amazing part, and I'm really excited to show you guys, um, is actually projected into the OpenShift web console, right? So the deployment outcome for Azure, very similar, right? The same MC nodes, uh, the difference is you're using HCI OS, so it's that Azure Stack HCI layer, Storage Spaces Direct, Hyper-V, uh, and the Microsoft SDN stack, right? The Apex Cloud Platform software is running inside of a Cloud Platform Manager VM on top of Hyper-V, right? It's the same a Cloud Platform Foundation software. Instead of running it in native containers, we're running it in containers inside the VM. Right? And of course, that extension projects that infrastructure management into Windows Admin Center. And of course, through Azure Arc, you have that connectivity through, with Azure for doing um, fleet level management, for doing Arc enabled VMs, uh, AKS hybrid, right? all of those features that make Azure Stack HCI a hybrid operating system. So you're not replacing the management layer of the Azure Stack HCI you're facilitating the deployment and lifecycle management of the hardware and the OS? Yes, and then projecting our infrastructure management into that cloud OS management experience. So it can be aware of the status of the infrastructure components it's running on. Right. The key is we're not creating a separate set of tooling 
that you need to go out to to manage the infrastructure, right? To look at node status or health or alerts or anything mm -hmm. like that. We are bringing all of that directly into the cloud OS, right? So through the Windows Admin Center extension, through the um, OpenShift Web Console extension, we're bringing all of that management into that cloud OS experience. So the people that are managing those clusters are using the same tool that they use to manage the cluster and the workloads on top of it to manage the underlying infrastructure as well. So if I could draw a parallel as a crusty old VMware admin, <laughs> uh, the, the vSphere console allowed you to install plugins that you could use to manage and monitor the hardware behind and network behind your vSphere clusters. Yes. So this is in a similar vein. It's exposing that information and potentially allowing you to do some management functionality without leaving that management console. So it's very much in line with what we built for VxRail through VxRail Manager. Okay. Which kind of paved the way for a lot of what you're referring to. Right. Yep. So yes, it's, it's that same thought process. We're just expanding it to a broader portfolio of products. Okay. And the base assumption is that the hardware underneath is all Dell supplied hardware. Yes. Okay. Yes. This has to be run on MC nodes. MC nodes. Do you care about the networking? So the networking is, uh, so yes, we have a subset of approved networking options for, or I'm sorry. So when you say networking, we have a subset of approved NICs that we will allow in those nodes. Mm -hmm. As far as the networking, uh, do we make you buy our switches or do you, can you consume your own? You can consume your own. Right? We, we don't, as long as your switches support the features that the network needs, mm -hmm. we're not going to say you have to buy Dell switching or you have to do this, right? We, we're agnostic there. Okay. So there's some prerequisites, obviously, in order to get the, the infrastructure ready for the deployment that we just saw. Yes. In terms of you need VLANs or, you know, networks or... That is correct. Whatever else ready, yep. Yes, and um, all of this is done through um, ProDeploy, so the Dell's ProDeploy. Uh, if we provide the switches, uh, our ProDeploy will manage, will configure those switches uh, as part of this deployment. If you provide the switches, then our ProDeploy engineers will work with the customer's networking team to um, make sure that everything's lined up correctly so that the way we configure the nodes is going to match with the way they've configured the switches. Got it. And, and one more thing, w would I then use, sorry if this was covered, would I also then use any of the other Dell management tooling for the kind of infrastructure monitoring and management, or is that all encapsulated in, in Apex now? You could I'm absolutely. I'm thinking old school, open manage, you know, yep, that sort of stuff. I understand yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> could, uh, but as you'll see, the need for that really isn't there. Cool. So if you have it and you want to use it, go ahead. These nodes have IDRAX in them. You can connect to the IDRAX, you can pull that information. Uh, what I would say is um, you're not going to use open manage to lifecycle. Right. Right. So these have specialized lifecycle management workflows that are built into the Cloud Platform Foundation software that are aware of the Cloud OS that's there. Um, and we'll talk more about that. So you won't use those features, but in terms of monitoring and alerting, you absolutely could. Okay. Thanks. But you also have capabilities of, so for instance, the Azure piece that we're talking about here, we already have rules um, created for Azure Monitor that you can import in so that you can do alerting and monitoring right from Azure Monitor for all of your clusters across your fleet. Right? So there's, there's options. All right, and then of course you have the ability to run uh, AKS Hybrid on top of this as well. It's not a requirement, but you can. So why did you choose to use Spaces Direct as opposed to PowerFlex on this one? It's like you're reading ahead in my slides. <laughs> um, so Storage Spaces Direct is okay. uh, because- you Pay me later. It's a, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll settle up off afterwards. <laughs> um, Storage Spaces Direct is a requirement for Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's okay. no way around that. Okay. But one of the things that we are adding, and this is a validated solution that will be available, um, we're in February now, so I can say next month, um, <laughs> that will add support for the Dell SDS 
into the Apex Cloud Platform for Microsoft Azure, right? It's not going to remove the need for storage spaces direct uh, within that cluster configuration, but it is going to give you an alternate place where you can store data so that you can use that data for virtual machines or, right? Which really will improve over time scalability, right? So we've already talked about the scale of what PowerFlex can do, right? Being able to scale to 512 storage nodes and being able to scale to 2,048 compute nodes. Obviously, Azure Stack HCI today can only go to, to 16 nodes, um, and most clusters are far smaller than that. Um, this gives you an alternate capability to be able to extend beyond those storage capacities. It also, also gives you the ability to scale storage independent from compute, which you don't have with the Azure Stack HCI today. 